Good morning, everyone. So today was supposed to be the uh, book launch party for Cold Country. Of course, we all know what happened there. Um, so I'm going to actually read a little bit from Cold Country for today. Um, this needs a bit of a setup. So this book opens with a, a new family moving to a small ranching community in Paradise Valley, Montana. And um, <clears> the <throat> first day of school at this one-room school, um, Roger Logan, who's 10, gets into a fight with one of the other kids, um, and he hits him with a bat. So um, this scene that takes place just a couple days later is um, when one of the local ranchers comes to visit Roger's dad, Carl. And uh, Tom Butcher is the main, one of the main characters in the book. Uh, he uh, He's a local rancher who's uh, one of the more wealthy uh, members of the this community. Um, and he has another guy with him named Spider Moses. And they have come, supposedly, to look at some bulls that Carl's boss has for sale. So that's the setup. They're uh, out in the field looking at these bulls. Well, it's time to be straight with you, Mr. Logan. Tom rotated toward Carl, feet and all, and kept his arms crossed. Carl felt a sudden desire to take a step backward. Straight about what, he said. I'm really not interested in these bulls, Tom said, indicating the animals with his head. No? Carl felt the heat of irritation, thinking of all the things he should be doing. Nah, Tom shook his thick head. Truth is, I wouldn't buy a bottle of oxygen from Kenwood if I was choking to death. He studied Carl's response to this. Carl held his face steady. Truth is, we just wanted to talk. And I apologize for not telling you that in the first place, but I thought it might seem a little strange. That's all right, Carl said, looking away from Tom. He sensed Spider almost behind him, shifting again. Carl looked down at the ground as if he was thinking and rocked a couple of steps to one side so that when he turned, the three men formed a triangle, all facing the middle. Carl shoved his hands in his pockets, hunching his shoulders against the drizzle. The problem here... Tom started, then looked up at the sky and pursed his lower lip. The problem here is that this community has a few standards. We all know... We've all known each other for a hell of a long time. We know what to expect. Everyone knows I'm going to open my big mouth and piss a few people off. And everyone knows old Spider here wouldn't take a stand on something if his life depended on it. Everyone knows your man Kenwood doesn't give a damn about the people in this country. That he just has this place as a little hobby. A tax shelter. And that the place really belongs to Lester Ruth who's poured his damn heart and soul into it. Tom stopped for a minute, studying Carl as if to make sure the message was sinking in. Carl held his gaze but made no effort not to but made an effort not to indicate anything at all. When something unexpected happens out here, everyone gets a little nervous. Especially when there's a stranger involved, Tom. Tom scratched his head, as if considering what to say next. You getting my drift here, Carl? Carl swallowed. Are you talking about what happened with my boy? Is this what this is all about? His voice came out louder than he expected. Well, that's part of it. Tom looked at the ground. Of course it is. See, we don't like violence around here. We don't like violence. And we don't like educated folks trying to put on airs. He held up a hand. I'm not saying you've done that. You seem like a nice enough fella, but I'm just telling you for your own sake. We aren't a real open-minded bunch of folks. Tom tilted his head and grinned a lopsided grin. 
Plus, a lot of folks thought Lester should have gotten that job. He's been waiting in the wings for a long time. Carl held his breath, trying to calm himself, but the blood rose up in him, hot and red. All right, listen to me for a second now, Mr. Butcher. He struggled to control the tremor in his voice. <clears throat> you don't have to intimidate me. I'm already nervous. That doesn't mean I have to stand here and listen to your threats. My son reacted to a bad situation just like any kid who's backed into a corner. He was wrong. I know it and he knows it. But that's no cause to get in my face. I came out here for one reason. To work hard and support my family. Probably just like everyone else out here. Carl stared at Tom, breathing heavily through his nose. His nostrils flared with the rush of air. Tom's expression didn't change, but he had tilted his head backward as Tom, as Carl said his piece. <clears throat> he was looking at him this way now, down his nose. He reached up and took off his sunglasses, then rubbed his eyelids, pressing firmly against the eyeballs with a weathered knuckle. Carl was twitching and shuffling his feet to Carl's right. Tom looked at Carl, and his dark brown eyes showed a mixture of amusement and impatience. Well now, Carl, that was a hell of a speech. Then he looked away, across the pasture, toward the mountains. But words are pretty much of a nuisance. I'm not inclined to pay much attention to what a man says. He looked back at Carl. You gotta remember, our people got this land by stringing a bunch of fancy words together. We know a little bit about how that works. Get my drift? Carl bit his tongue and tasted blood. I'm not trying to threat you or intimidate you. I'm just letting you know. I could have just let it be and let all the talk go on behind your back. You know, you wouldn't know what we were saying, but you'd know we were talking, right? Carl thought, chewing the inside of his lip. The more he thought about it, the more he realized Tom might actually be trying to help. Just give it some thought, Tom said. Let's go. I'm freezing my ass off out of here. He started walking back toward the pickup, and Spider followed as if attached by a string. Carl stood where he was for a moment, just long enough to feel alone, to think about how it would be if Tom hadn't told him these things. He knew Tom was right, just as his wife had said, that people would talk, that they probably already were talking, and he wondered how many times in his life someone had taken the trouble to let him know exactly where he stood.